is how do you use analytics for deeper classes. Now, when people, uh, when people come and say, let's do analytics, I say, oh, it's easy. I can do it in five to five minutes. I'll do it in one slide, right? So if you want to do analytics, if you want to do just analytics, collect some data, whatever easiest to get your hands on, do some aggregations, draw some pictures, charts, complex the better, nobody understands what's going on. And uh, then don't, don't compare it to anything else and just say, I've just got started, how cool it is. However, if you ask me how to use analytics to change a business or rethink or add value, I ask, okay, how, how long do you have, right? So, the, it's not that hard to do some analytics, but to use it to change business, to change uh, the world works, and to make money is not easy, obviously, right? So this is an example of a company that, I'm, I mean, I'm sure you have heard this 150 times, the Uber story. The, the funniest part of this story is that it's a taxi company that do not own cars, nor the drivers, and uh, if you go back five years back and ask somebody to think how the taxi company would be, there's no chance that they'll think this would be the thing, right? So we, we see this trend like with happening with Amazon Go, et cetera, right? So, so what is happening is that there is this technologies come in that changes the business as we know it. Some of these technologies, this is not exhaust, there are other things, but the three main are analytics, social and mobile, and crowdsourcing, right? So now, the, we already talk about, for example, Sanjeev's keynote, etc. Uh, then this idea of digital business came. The idea is that you use this technology to rethink how the business works so that they'll change the, uh, change the business, uh, fundamentally change the business. Now, so, so uh, I think when you get to the digital business, when another very important point to note is that yes, of course, uh, there are some digital in the business, but most businesses, there are a few examples like uh, Uber, Amazon, etc. But although the digital technologies has been around for a long time, they hadn't changed, uh, on average across businesses, they haven't changed the fundamental truth significantly. They, like for example, if you look at the outputs, if you talk to economics, they say, yes, IT is great, but we don't see the output. We don't see, it's not like the industrial um, revolution where number, like outputs significantly change. So the idea of digital business is finally to bring in these new things into the businesses to make a real difference. So there are main, uh, many places that these can play in, but um, these five, basically I'll, I'll summarize that to three, but let me explain it in five. These are five ways that um, those technologies come in. And uh, so, sorry, here I am focusing on analytics. These are, these are five ways the analytics come into the business and change things. The first is, uh, you could use analytics 
to create new products and create new revenue streams. The second is to get close to the customer, understand what they want, understand how they think, understand what they do. Uh, the another, another side is part of the getting close to the customer is that improve how you get out to the customer, improve how you do marketing. Uh, fourth is obvious thing which is improve operations. The fifth is establish and build value networks. So what this means is this may be your partners, this may be your supply chain, etc. Uh, the try to build the relationship with them and add value to them. One very famous example is that Walmart, they give very detailed analytics down their value chain who, for their partners, etc. Right? For example, if you, if you are a, say, um, a shampoo company, they, the Walmart would give you a lot of analytics on how your products being sold how long they in the self life, whatever, right? So that become a major um, competitive advantage for the Walmart when the, when the, uh, who, the manufacturer compare supplying things to Walmart versus somebody else. So they let the, 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 the suppliers and the manufacturer uh, innovate. So let, let's let's go through one by one, right? So uh, the examples of um, new way of doing businesses are obviously Uber. Uh, then, like there are some uh, uh, equipments, for example, uh, very expensive equipments that sold as a service, right? So you only pay for what you use, right? There's a famous uh, progressive insurance gadget. Right? And finally, the data that you have, uh, you, you might get as a byproduct of operating, might have a lot of other additional values. Right? Which now we go into the, like this is a controversial topic, but I mean this is already happening, right? Um, so, so all these become uh, like new spins of your business. Right. Then uh, next one is get close to your uh, customers. So now, uh, so the, the, now this can come many ways. I'm not going to go through all the experiences. But uh, now think of um, think of a use case such as like due to some reason your flight get cancelled. Right? Now, there's no reason that they can automatically rebook you and send you an SMS with the link. They could have done it 10 years ago, actually. So, so, this, uh, so this has many angles, right? Uh, but the main idea is that understand what customers want, A. B is be proactive about so trying to solve their problems problems so that they experience least friction. Now the good news is this, this would redefine the customer experiences. You get a new opportunity of course, but if you are not acting, there's a lot of chance somebody else has come and take over. The Next one is obviously optimizations, crank the wheel, get most out. So I'll, I'll only discuss, talk about one example here, which is predictive maintenance. So now let's say you are a taxi company, uh, or rather, okay, you don't have to go that far. If you own a car, right, um, now the reason we do scheduled maintenance is to keep it running. But the schedule maintenance by definition is, uh, is pessimistic. Basically, you can't set the value for the maximum value, you set it to average value. So you would generally uh, service earlier than it's actually necessary. 
using technologies like machine learning, et cetera, to do predictive maintenance, trying to guess using the data collected from, from the device where it is likely to fail would let you even optimize. Right? So, so the, the, these, uh, now, uh, this, this, the thinking, this kind of thinking is the idea here. Like this goes from like reducing fraud, improving logistics, etc. Right? The idea is that go, dig in, understand what's going on, try to optimize, get maximum out of the system. Okay, great. Now let's let's try to look at if you want to build a system like that, if you want to make this real, what do you do? So. Uh, this, this is a very high level picture of different part of an organization where you would collect the data, right? So this, if, if you go back, sorry, actually, okay, let me show it. So that if you look at this picture and the new picture, they are close. So now, the, at different of these points, you would collect the data you would run through, you apply your analysis, right? And you would generate alerts, dashboards, decision models, and sometime action recommendations, right? Now, let me focus on very interesting part of this picture. Uh, at this point where you collect the data, the API can play a very key role because the with this new api centric mindset the most of your interesting activities both internal and external would be modeled as apis which means if you the data collection at the api layer give you very detailed understanding of what going on the business right so that to at least to a certain extent simplify the data collection problem. Now, so this, this shows the same thing, but using different technology, using technologies. If you remember the similar picture we used to use before, it is similar, only difference is that now we had made this real time analytics part a little bit bigger versus the other parts we had made a little smaller. Right, so let me let me uh, try to describe this in detail. So we used to have had three products, which is one is complexity and processor, which is real time analytics. We had the machine learner with this machine learning. Third is the data analytics server, which is actually everything, other two and the batch analysis. So with the uh, with the uh, re replacement, sorry, not the replacement, uh, with the uh, new presentation of five products, basically we are actually dropping the complexity and process and machine learner, and only we will continue to only release data analytics server. But again, the features don't go away, because the data analytics server used to be everything, right? So, uh, our lot of our focus would be on streaming analytics, Right? But we also, so we, we continue to support both the batch, interactive and predictive analytics. So, uh, so one, one difference would be that we used to uh, embed the Spark into the data analytics server. In the, in the new, actually current, the last release still has it embedded, but the next release, we will basically have let you connect to a Apache Spark started outside. So the, these two, I mean, functionality wise again it doesn't change, but the deployment wise it simplifies because what we find is that very often a lot of people have a Spark cluster running, etc. Right. So, uh, so 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 basically, um, the, in the future we will basically we will work with the data analytics server but the, all the features are there. So there's a ch change in the machine learning, but I'll come the, to that in a minute. So if you, 
Now, if you look through the, now this, the data collection points from the technology perspective, right? You could collect them at the APIs, uh, there are JMX, logs, so on and so forth. Now, we have a API, one API to collect the data, right? So, uh, basically, now, if you want to store data in a relational database, what you do is you go and create a table. You define schema and you create a table. That would let you write queries on top of that schema, SQL queries. Here, the model is same. We call the data collection a stream. You can mentally replace the table with the stream because stream is a description of the schema, right? So you, you define streams for whatever the data that you want to collect. There's a one API where you could publish the data. Then you could go to the analysis and write queries, both the batch, real time, so on and so forth. So the, the, what we're trying to achieve is to basically, there's a one way to publish the data, collect the data, but you could analyze it in any, any way, such as batch, real time, et cetera, right? So you will see example in few minutes. Now, okay, great, fine. Now you have, you have these APIs to collect the data. When you start collecting the data, there's a one very, very important concept that you need to look into, which is KPIs or key performance indicators. So when, when people talk about KPIs, there's a one example that comes to my mind, very famous example. Um, so the coal mines used to take these small birds called canaries into the mine. They, the idea is that because they are very small, even a very small level of oxygen would basically knock them out. So you would know very early that you have to go get out, right? So the idea of a KPI is the same. Idea of a KPI, KPI stands for Key Performance Indicators, they are some numbers that represent ground truths about your organization. These are very often they relate to money, don't have to be, right? But uh, there are like uh, uh, very often like company revenue, uh, so on and so forth comes in. Now, they, of course, there are ones for organizations, there are one for countries, etc. Now, if you are in a certain domain, you should go and find out what are the good KPIs for your domain. Because some of defining these KPIs take a lot of work and people had worked very hard on those. Unfortunately, if there's no well-known KPIs defined, of course, you have to do the hard work of defining them, right? So, but it's very important that you think what is important to collect before you collect the data. It is not what you should collect is not what is easiest to collect. If you look, if you compare that with the, my first uh, big data washing slide, what you want to collect is what is important. What the KPIs that actually show the ground truth, okay? Not the what's most easiest to collect. Uh, so this is very important because this, if you may, if you don't collect the right data, it's very hard to fix it later. Because generally the instrumentation step is very, very expensive because you generally would have to go and change it in many places, many devices, et cetera. So it's very hard to fix it later. Okay, fine. You have your collection data points. You have defined your KPIs. Now you publish your data. You have the data. Uh, the, now you can basically, first step is you can do batch analytics. Batch analytics is you store the data somewhere, then you take the data out and process it, right? This MapReduce or Spark, etc. Now, uh, so what we, uh, now, for example, if you want to use Spark directly, etc., you could go and write a Scala code, etc., 
and do this. But what we had found is that trying to do it on SQL like query language, for example, the Spark SQL, actually is very natural and because if you think about data, you will naturally think in terms of SQL because that's there's a lot of relationships. So trying to do language like this make a lot of sense. But uh, then these queries look very much like SQL. There are like minor changes, but when you, a lot of people understand SQL and you have to understand the difference. Okay. But the most important thing is that what you can do more. Right? So there are three other things that you can do with the analytics, real time, incremental and intelligent. Let me start with the incremental. Now if you think about a digital business, most of the time the analysis that you do are not one time things. These are the numbers that you want to keep calculating. Right? I mean you want to know the revenue every day maybe every week, every month, right? So now if you want to do this, of course you can do it with batch. It'll work. You can go and do it, but it's a little bit of work. Like for example, uh, let's say you want to know the, um, the revenue each day. Um, so uh, what you would have to do is, each day you do the calculation and put it to a database somehow either and then basically summarize from there or of course you can have the data but every day you can reprocess it which is expensive. So you could do this with just analytics. However, there's like very common kind of code that you have to write again and again. So we, we did this lot for when we build analytics for our products. And then we kind of figured out, okay, maybe you can generalize that. So actually, the, so the, the, the next release would have special set of incremental operators where you could, direct, on the operator level, you say that, okay, I want to calculate these aggregate values every day, every week, so on and so forth. So basically, you write a one line and it will do the aggregation and expose that data via what we call a event table. Uh, so just one disclaimer, we haven't done that for incremental part for machine learning. It, this only work for aggregate aggregations. Okay. So the next uh, topic is real-time analytics. I'm sure uh, uh, there's a lot of buzz around this. You have heard about this before. So the, the main idea is that there are certain use cases where the value of your output degrade very fast, right? So if you look at these examples, like stock markets, is they, they are useless within milliseconds, within one millisecond even less. Right, because this is about trading, whoever can trade fastest, right? Even the traffic, etc., it may be 15 minutes, etc. So, um, so, so, so the real time analytics is the technology that let you respond to the, produce the resource very fast when the data comes and keep doing that in streaming fashion. Okay, so one, the so there are several technologies that use for this. The technology that we uh, we uh, the solution we provide is called complex VN processing. So what you do is you write a query like this one, right? So it's SQL like, but it's extended version. So you have these data streams that what we have talked about so far. So this query says from this talk code table, take a window of one minute, then also take this tweets table, take a window of one minute, join them on this condition and produce this resource. So, so with this, using this SQL like queries, you could detect very complicated conditions. I will give one or two examples later. 
right. So, but the idea is that they would generate a resource within milliseconds of each event, right. So, which let you handle these scenarios uh, where you need the output very fast. Uh, so, I will go through two use cases. This uh, uh, basically this the idea is that uh, people tracking using Bluetooth low energy. Uh, so, the in this use case, the people were wearing uh, either wearing or carrying a, a Bluetooth low energy device. So, these, um, these devices were uh, tracked by the beak, uh, not the beacons, the responders placed on known locations, right. So, then when you do this, know the signal, you know rough direction where the beacon is. So, using three or more uh, responders, you could triangulate the location. Uh, so, the, the use cases are like, it, this can use for like, for example, um, now, one scenario is that from the mobile app, let us say uh, it is a retail shop, if the uh, customer is using the mobile app issued by the retail shop, then the mobile app can uh, generate the uh, uh, low energy signal. Then from that you could tell where the customer is from using the transponders inside. Then based on where the customers are often they are etcetera based on the his behavior. Uh, one thing is you could know like high level data such as where the lot of people are, right. Also like for example, if you maybe if the customer look very confused, somebody can go and try to help him. Scenarios like that. So, this use case maybe a lot of you has uh, seen this before. So, this uh, demo we did about two years back. This basically a uh, uh, data collector from real football game with sensors in the boots and in the ball. Uh, so, basically, uh, so I will not play this, but you could have a look later. What we, what we have done is we had created a, a real time dashboard like so the, it show different KPIs. For example, it showed things like how long each team controlled the ball. Uh, how many passes were like missed, so on and so forth. And the, the we basically on the demo, we run, run the video and the analytics all on top of each other. So, they respond almost real time. And right? you could see while the game is going, you could see the numbers changing and they make sense. Okay. So, the last one, which is predictive analytics. Now, uh, so, the people call this predictive analytics, machine learning and AI, it, they are not the same thing. There are uh, like for example, uh, the AI is the more, more, uh, uh, more, more advanced form versus the machine learning is a subset etcetera, but we can consider them similar for this discussion. So, to understand this thing let's think we want to write a program to drive a car okay now if so okay fine at least at the base level you would think it's not that hard right if you if you but if you actually try to do it you can make it work like 75% of the time but the problem is okay first 10 rules that you code would cover 70% but next 100 rules will only give you 5 percent. Next 10,000 rules still there will be like 1 percent loss. So, the problem is that there are some use cases where there are so many conditions, it is very hard for a human programmer to understand what is going on in a lot of detail and write that program. What machine learning does is it is an algorithm that can take a lot of examples. For example, the how the auto driving systems work is they have data sets that shows these are the different sensors values, these are what humans did at this portion. From these lot of examples, it can learn the program. 
that program we call a model. Now, in last few years, there were a lot of improvements in these technologies and the, their accuracy has been significantly improved. Okay. So, so we had actually the current release version, we have this something called machine learner wizard. What that let you do is it basically starts, it's a wizard, it starts and basically goes through a wizard and uh, basically let you give different things, start with the data set, go through the wizard and create a data machine learning model. But something we had learned is that A, the machine learning um, technology is changing very, very fast to try to keep building that kind of a wizard. A, the B is that actually the lot of work goes into the feature engineering and that is very hard to model for, through a wizard. And then we actually had decided to drop the wizard. Instead, basically we let you bring the models built from other technologies. For example, if you do machine learning, the, what you, what people use, I mean, I, when I want to build a model, that is what I have been end up using, you use Python, most of the time Python, R, etc. So, what we had decided is that the best way to go forward is not to try to build that wizard, right, which is, which is a catch up game and uh, at least it may, might be possible in another 3, 4 years. But the current state of the way things are moving, it is very hard to build such a visa. So, what we had decided is to let, let people bring in the models they built using other technologies into the platform. So, basically for that within the ESB, also with the Baldrina and also within CEP, uh, you could bring in the models and run them within. If the models are exported into PMML, this, this uh, predictive markup modeling language, it is XML standard like R, lot of things support ex exporting things in this form. O models build with SPA, we can run them. The, uh, so, even for others, we can run them, but you would have to write a little bit of code. The, they are, we, so, we'll, we are building extensions for those as well, especially for TensorFlow, but it is not done yet. But if you want to do this, you can do a little bit of code. So, so basically, we, this is the machine model that we go for predictive analytics. So, we we'll, we we'll let you, basically, we are saying that use one of the tools that uh, work best for you and bring in the model, then we can use it. Okay. So, uh, this uh, example model that we built, actually this in production, uh, the basically what it does is it used the data, historical data to predict how long uh, average customer has to go, takes to go through the security check points. The basically what it does is Using the model predictions, it will notify you on the app, the, tell the customer, okay, for today you need to come like two hours before versus one hour, etc. So, keep updating. Okay. So, uh, one other topic that we had looked in lot of detail uh, is anomaly detection. Right. So, because this is a very common problem, this apply for fraud, um, even to predictive maintenance, etc. Uh, so, the, so we had like uh, we have we have tried several long list of techniques, like including clustering, Marco chains, etc. So, actually, this white paper talks about that in a lot of detail. Okay, great. Now you have the data. You define the KPS, you collect the data, now you do analysis, right. So, there are three things that when you have the analysis, there are three ways that you could generally would want to get them out. 
So one is the, a dashboard. I'm sure you know what dashboard means. It's a pretty pictures uh, presented in a website. But the idea, the best way to understand what a dashboard does is to look at your car dashboard. The concept of a dashboard is that it is boring when everything is good, right? Nobody wants to see red things in the car dashboard, right? Everything is green or nothing there means everything is good, don't worry. When something wrong, it will show something. Now, unlike a car dashboard, in the, oh, sorry, on these systems, you would want to, when you see a problem, you want to drill down and see what's wrong. So the, these dashboard systems try to build the same thing. It's a dashboard. It shows the status of the system, but it's very boring when nothing wrong. But when there's interesting condition, something would pop up or something color changes. You could click, go in, drill in, and figure out what's the root cause. Now for building the dashboards, uh, one option is that you could write them using JavaScript, etc. Also, we include a wizard that let you start with a data set, for example, table, right? And you can say that, okay, this is the table, I want a bar chart. The x-axis of my bar chart is this column in the table, y-axis is this column. The color of the data point peak based on the value of this column. Etc. So actually, this is the this concept is uh, called grammar of visualizations. Sorry, it's called grammar of graphics. Actually, it comes from um, the same research group who generated D3, etc. Right. So, um, so basically, the, that idea. It now to the truth is that this cannot cover 100% all the use cases. It cannot do all, all very complicated things. But most of the simple dashboards that you want to create, you, this wizard would let you create them. Okay. Then, the third and very interesting uh, another form of communication is that very often this data is accessed over the network from other parties. For example, if there's a mobile app, mobile app would talk to your system through a network. Right, and that call come from an untrusted party because it's on the your customer's mobile lab, mobile. So whenever data need to cross the boundary, administrative boundaries, and you cannot trust the other side, the best way to handle that is try to build an API because the API management would handle the details of security, subscriptions, so on and so forth. So the very it's a very natural way to handle this problem by putting an api manager between your data that you want to expose right then let the api manager handles the subscription security so on and so forth okay then the finally the alerts uh, the uh, the, again, the idea of alerts, okay, nobody, none of us likes the alerts, but the idea of alerts is to give peace of mind because you don't have to keep looking at the system, right? So, uh, important thing is they should be specific. You need to be able to know, like do something about that, right? Otherwise, there's no point sending alerts. And they, there shouldn't be a lot of false positives because otherwise people will lose the uh, trust in the system, right? So it, it is tricky to hit this balance, uh, but the, other than that, the implementations, they could be done like simple rules or like machine learning models trained and bring into CEP to make the decisions, so on and so forth. But you need to tune the sensitivity of the decisions so that it doesn't give you a lot of false positives. Okay. So, okay, all these are great, but it's very, very important that when you build a system like that, taking the time to understand what happens. So, let me 
quickly talk about uh, this is a famous case study most likely you would have heard this so um, the story says that the toothpaste company they found that they are some of the toothpaste they ship don't have the tube in it just the box right so they uh, of course the customers won't be happy so they build a very complicated system to detect this right you can think sensors iot lot of money and when they apply the thing the when when it go to production the all the these incidents drop by like 10 times okay problem solved but okay everything is good but the guy who was analyzing this he actually go and looked at how many times this system has triggered and found a problem and he found only once okay now okay fine now you put a solution it solve the problem but somehow there something doesn't make sense on the middle so then he went and talked to the guy who was at that specific place and apparently what had happened was that there's a fan sitting there on the line the fan set up so what the fan would do is it will blow out the the empty thing so what had happened was that now this complete system when the empty thing comes it will alarm and it's lot of trouble for the guy sitting there he found a very simple solution to the problem he put the fan right now of, uh, now yes some problems has very simple solutions but the uh, to me very important point about that case study is that the guy who was looking at the data bothered to look at basically he he create a mental model of how the system supposed to work right because he said okay i put the sensors there's an alarm if it work then alarms has to be logged so he went through and and try to understand in lot of detail which give him lot of understand what happens and actually there was a very simple solution so uh, i believe this very important because all this analytics machine learning all the technology is great however you need to try to understand what's going on especially after some time in operation because uh, okay with all their greatness sometimes they do stupid things and there are sometimes simpler solutions so so to finish up so there are actually we have introduced set of new solutions so these are basically what we have done is we have picked specific domains and done some work so that if you are in that domain and trying to use the product it's easier and so, so there are some version that you can take out and directly run but the not all use cases are exactly similar so sometime you need to do some customizations but we we can uh, provide support for doing that okay so um, so that's pretty much it so the uh, these are few highlights so we actually we were listed uh, on 2016 both on gartner and the uh, forester reports right so these are some so there are about 30 plus customers who use the das these three technologies right these are some of the use cases oops okay and uh, these are some of the uh, key differentiators uh, you, this you know already right so uh, this is like you don't have to think how you're going to analyze the data before you collect the data or like you might start with batch but you can bring in more right and there's sql like core language uh, machine learning so on and so forth